why I'm back with another video. I'm Reckless. Hi, Chris. Got the moment Larry Elder changed Dave Rubens. I'm saying mine. This is about a system, uh, what is it? Uh, systemic racism. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, make sure y'all hit the like button, that subscribe button. Definitely appreciate everybody tuning in and watching this reaction. Her name is Rennie, for y'all that's asking. Um, y'all hear I say, Daddy, Rennie. This is what we're talking about. Hopefully this goes good. Let's get a reaction. So, but you wouldn't not acknowledge that there are some systemic issues. Give, give me an example. G tell me what you think the most systemic racist issue is. What is it? Well, I would say that because black people in most cases, in many cases, were descendants of slaves, that racism as a as an institution, that it just, a certain amount of it just exists. 2015? Give, give me the most blatant racist example you can come up with right now. Um, I think you could probably find evidence that, in general, cops are that, that cops are more willing to shoot if the uh, perpetrator is black. What's your data? Than white. What's your basis for saying that? Like, yes, yes, well, like I know a lot of people yeah, would say, "Look yeah. what's going on in Chicago." I, I, I know what they would yeah. say. Yeah. I'm talking about what the facts are. 965 people were shot by cops last uh, last year and killed. Four percent of them were white cops shooting unarmed blacks. In, in Chicago in 2011, 21 people were shot and killed okay, by cops. So uh, in 2015, there were seven. Uh, in Chicago, which is a third black, a third white, and a third Hispanic, 70% of the homicides are black on black. Uh, about 40 per month, almost 500 uh, in the year per year, last year in Chicago, and 75% of them are unsolved. Where is the Black Lives Matter on that? The idea that a racist white cop uh, and shooting unarmed black people is a peril to black people is BS. It's yeah. complete and total BS. And, and the reason for these so-called activists saying this is the assumption that racism remains a major problem in America. The media, CNN, especially MSNBC, runs down whenever a black cop shoots somebody uh, and, and, and it's a, some, some march on Washington. It's ridiculous. Uh, black people, half the homicides in this country are committed by and against black people. Last year there were 14,000 homicides, I'm not talking about suicides, I'm talking about homicides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, half of them were black, 96% of them black on black of that 7,000. Where's the black, black Lives Matter people on that? So that, there's where you would say that this is purely because of social justice. This Pure, is purely because, because of, yeah. they want ultimately for people to be angry enough to just keep voting Democrat. That's right. That, and that and where's, where's the evidence of a lack of social justice? When a black uh, suspect is killed by, by a cop, believe me, the media is on it. People are watching it. Uh, and, uh, and justice will, will, for the most part, occur. In Baltimore, where Freddie Gray was killed, uh, Freddie Gray died in a van, I shouldn't say was killed, died in a van. Yeah. You have a city that's 45% uh, black, uh, city council is 100% Democrat, the majority of city council is black, the top cop at the time was, was black, the number two cop was black, the majority of the command staff is black, the, the mayor is black, uh, the AG is black, uh, and Damn yet here we are talking about racism. I mean, it's, it's absurd. Yeah. It's absurd. So it's funny, I find myself caught in between this a little bit as a liberal. See, I feel like it's just one thing, like he he wants to, he, it's one thing of somebody coming and asking these questions and it's okay to ask those type of questions because I could ask those same questions too when I first started reacting to these videos yeah. of how is this this is how is that. And I look at it as, it's, it's more of a learning process um, yeah, with, with the lots. Yeah. With uh, statistics, with, with you know, uh, percentages. Like you gotta know your whole facts, yeah. like everything. And it's good to ask. It's definitely good to ask. I always was taught that, you know, we ask. Where I want to always try to defend the other. So in this case, the other being black people, I, I'm always sympathetic to that. that and that, uh, yeah, yeah, and at the same time, I hear you laying out a pretty solid Well, I, these are just the facts. I'll tell you something else, too. There was just a study, um, uh, University of Washington. Uh, and it turns out cops were more reluctant, more hesitant to pull the trigger against a black, black suspect than a white suspect. Uh, probably because of the fear of being accused of racially profiling and the fear that the civil rights establishment was going to come down on him. So if anything, uh, whites are more likely to be shot by a cop under, under certain circumstances than a, than, a, uh, than a black person. And in the last 30 or 40 years, the number of percentage of suspects killed by cops who are black has declined 75%. However, the percentage of whites killed by cops has flatlined. 
Yeah. And so if anything, people are more concerned about shooting black people for fear that they're going to be called racist. And almost all, every one of these incidents, whether it's Eric Gardner in, in New York, who died because he was selling Lucy's and resisted arrest, whether it's Tamir Rice in Cleveland, who was twirling around the gun, whether it's Michael Brown in Ferguson, uh, who had just uh, committed a ar strong arm robbery, almost every one of these incidents involves somebody resisting arrest. Why don't you just do what the police tell you? My dad said, when I get pulled exactly. over, have my yeah. hand at 10 yeah. o'clock, have my yeah. hand at 2 o'clock, say yes, sir, say no, sir, make sure my paperwork is in order, and if exactly. I feel the cop is uh, mistreating me, get a badge number and deal with it later on. If yeah. Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and it's, it's Obama... It's easy ways. Just what you said is very easy ways. Uh, my dad being a police officer telling me, keep your hands on the steering wheel on the dash, have all your paperwork out. It gives you... When, when you get pulled over and you notice that you're about to get pulled over, go ahead and start getting your stuff ready. Your registration is over there. And if you come to the window and say, sir, I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of you know, uh, moving in the car uh, when I was pulling you over, blah, blah, blah. You already have your stuff out, though. Uh, you, so, yeah. Or no, you tell them that, okay, well, I was trying to get my, you know, yeah. my stuff out. I was trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to get this out. I want to get this out. And, and that's why it was a little bit movement. <laughs> If it does cause you, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, search, then that's go right ahead. You feel me? You ain't got nothing, you know what I'm saying? It, so you always look at Yeah, you, you want to be positive. You want to be, you know, respectful, uh, you know what I'm saying, for, for your safety and for the officer's safety. Um, and I feel like that's just one of those things. Like, have your, have your stuff ready. Or if you really scared and you really don't want to do nothing, just have your hands on the steering wheel on the dash mm -hmm. and you wait for them to say something. You know what I mean? Obama and the whole group of them told black people to do that. We'd have a lot fewer of these things uh, to deal with in the first place. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm hearing a lot of what you're saying here. So as a black conservative then, who now you've, you've laid out your case there. But you haven't laid out yours. I, so, asked, I asked you to name the most important uh, example of racism, and you gave white cops going after black people. And I, and I told you, gave you the facts for that. So that's nonsense. So you must have something else. What else is it? If you think racism well, remains a problem in America, give it to well, me. Well, I think it remains a problem. Give it to it's me. Not, it's give it not, to me. It may not be systemic in that we have, it's not like you're not being hired because you're black. There's no systemic reason, you know, legal reason that that exists, that kind of thing. But I think that racism as a general uh, I need some, theory I need exists. Some, I need some specifics. You gave me the white cop thing. What else? Give me another example where you think is a problem. Well, well, uh, as a black conservative, tell she me stuttered. how do no, no, you, yeah, how you get people to come around you. You're the one who you made the assertion that yeah. you think racism remains a major problem can't in America. Answer a question. I asked you to black give me an can't. example. You gave me white cops going after blacks. I, as, as far as I'm concerned, you didn't hold it up very well. What's the other argument you have? What, what, what's the other thing? He's going well, to answer a question. I don't know that it's systemic the in, that, yeah. in the sort of macro sense. I'm not, I'm not bad. I, yeah, I, no, I, no, I no. want to know what, what it is you're, you're talking about. No, no. That's exactly what I Believe me, that's 100% what I wanted to have you here. Blacks are not getting into school. BS, that we have a race, we have affirmative action, so a black person with, a, with an SAT and a GPA uh, of, of X will, will get into a school faster and easier than a white person with an SAT uh, or a GPA of X. And if going to, going to school is a route to the middle class, you can make an argument that blacks have an easier route to, middle, to the middle class. If you're talking about uh, blacks, uh, about poverty, um, the poorer you are, the more accessible loans and grants are for you. Uh, the, 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 the problem, the, the biggest burden that black people have, in my opinion, again, is the percentage of blacks, 75% of them, that are raised without fathers. Uh, and that has every other social negative consequence connected to it. Crime, uh, not being uh, able to compete economically in the country, being more likely to be arrested, that's the number one problem facing the black community. And when I hear people tell me about systemic racism or unconscious racism, I always say, give me an example, and almost nobody can do it. So, so the family stuff, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll follow your logic there on mm -hmm. the family stuff. What, what can actually be done about that then? I mean, what, because that's, reverse, a, that's a big Reverse lift. the welfare state. Uh, in um, 1890, 1900, you look at census reports, a black kid, believe it or not, was slightly more likely to be born to a nuclear intact family than a white kid. Even during slavery, uh, a black kid was more likely to be born under a roof with his biological mother and biological father than today. What's happened mm. is we launched this so-called war on poverty in the 60s, where literally Lyndon Johnson sent people walk, knocking on doors. I, I, I lived in the 60s, and people knocked on doors, apprising women of their availability to welfare, provided there was no man in the house. Uh, and we went from 25% of blacks being born outside of wedlock in 65 to 75% right now. And you look at how much money that we spent on welfare, uh, and the lines are parallel. 
It was a neutron bomb dropped on this country, not just on the black community, but on people in general. Uh, at one time, only about 5% of whites were born outside of wedlock. Now 25% of whites are born outside of wedlock. I was in college in 1970, and there was a report called the Moynihan Report. Uh, the Negro Family, a Case for National Action. It's written by a liberal, by a man who became uh, a Democratic senator yeah. for the, from, from New York. And at the time, 25% of black kids were born outside of wedlock. He said, my God, this number is, is horrific. If we don't do something about it, it could get even higher. Well, fast forward, 25% of white kids are now born outside of wedlock. It is the number one problem in this country. And what we've done, in my opinion, is we've economically incentivized women to marry the government. And we've allowed mm. men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. And now we have this. Hey, look, hey, if you're discontented, that's, you're... that's deep right there, though. Like, I feel like Job. you, the you can't video, go though. work out when you want to work out you on somebody else's. I feel like I feel like that's a real deep video um, just based off of uh, his name, Dave. Dave asking these questions because there's going to be people that ask these questions, even people that's going to ask these questions and get mad. But the simple fact of I'm asking these questions and actually, you know, Getting, getting the answers that he actually needs and actually understanding, you know, okay, this is that, this is it. And I feel like that's most important to anything because there's other people that probably watch him that has these same feelings, but then Larry Elder go in and okay, this is that. Yeah, it clears it all up for everybody, make it make sense. Facts. And I feel like that's, 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 the, that's the most, you know, positive uh, thing that I, I took out of this. You know? You know? So I feel like that's definitely dope. Daddy has melted. But you already know, make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button. Definitely appreciate everybody tuning in and watching. If you actually haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Trying to reach 200K, 2,000 away. Definitely appreciate everybody that, you know what I'm saying, stand tuned, subscribe, like the video, comment down. Um, Y'all thoughts, videos, links, and stuff down below. Definitely appreciate it. Catch y'all next one.